Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMamoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to study inequalities. Now, what is an inequality? It is almost the same thing as an equation. But instead of an equal sign, in an inequality, we have one of these signs. Less than or greater than. Or this one is less than or equal. And this one is greater than or equal. For example, 2 is less than 3. That's an inequality. Okay, and it is a true inequality at that. Of course, you could write false inequalities too, such as that 0 is less than negative 1. That's not true. Then x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Or here's a more complex one. 2x plus half is less than or equal to negative 7x minus 5. An inequality usually doesn't have just one solution. For example, look at this one. x is greater than or equal to negative 7. There's many numbers that I can put here in place of x that make the inequality true, such as 0 or 1. 1 is greater than negative 7. And 2 is greater than negative 7. There's lots of numbers that fulfill this inequality. Even negative 7 itself, because negative 7 is equal to negative 7, so it fulfills this inequality, because here we have to have either greater than or equal. So the way we often give the solutions for an inequality is we plot them on a number line. For example, here's an inequality. x is less than 3. What kind of numbers can I put here in place of x so that this is true? For example, 0 would, would work, right? 1 would work and 2 would work. Now 3 does not because 3 is not less than 3. But the negative 1 would and also fractions, negative half, you know, all kinds of numbers. So we will basically plot it on the number line as a solid line what all numbers work. All these numbers work. All these negative numbers up to 0 are good. 1 is fine. 2 is fine. And anything that is less than 3 is fine will fulfill this inequality. But 3 does not. So I'm going to put here an open circle at 3, meaning that 3 itself does not belong to the solution set. All these numbers here, fractions, decimals between the integers, they are part of the solution set. This one, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Here, negative 2 is part of the solution set. Because negative 2 is equal to negative 2, it fulfills this inequality. So negative 2 will be part of this. And then any number that is greater than that will be just fine as well. So I will color the number line from negative 2 onward, like that. That's the solution set. Now, when we have more complex inequalities, such as this one here, we will solve them just like we solve equations. We even use the same exact principles as when solving equations. One principle being that you can add or subtract any number to or from both sides of the inequality, and the inequality still holds true. Let's say, for example, that we have 1 is less than 3. That's a true inequality, right? It's 1. And it's 3. 1 is less than 3. Now let's say that I would add something to both sides of this inequality. I'll add 1, for example. And then what will I get? I will get 2 is less than 4. And that is still true. It's still a true inequality. Or let's say that I subtract something from both sides. Let's say I subtract 3 from both sides here. So then I get negative 1 and 1. And that is still true, negative 1 and 1. If I have these two numbers here, and you know, 1 is less than 3, and if I add something to both sides, it means that I move both of these points to the right some amount, but it's the same amount. If I move these both points by 100 units over there, they will still be this way, this less than that. Or if I subtract something from both of them, they both move somewhere here, but they still, this is less than this, right? So the inequality still holds that way. We can use, therefore, this principle when we are solving these types of inequalities. For example, x plus 3 less than 2. Think of it as if it was an equation. What would you do? If there was an equal sign here, then you want to isolate x on this side and subtract 3 from both sides. We do the exact same thing with this one. We subtract 3 from both sides. And so that leaves x alone. This sign does not change. 
and then 2 minus 3 equals is negative 1. So x is less than negative 1, and then I plot it here. Negative 1 does not belong to the solution set, but anything less than negative 1, so all these numbers all the way there. And then you can try to check your solution. Checking your solution is not exactly the same as when you're checking the solution to an equation. But this is how you can check it, sort of. Take some numbers from here, from the solution set you plotted. Maybe this one, negative 3. And put it here and check if the inequality holds true. Negative 3 plus 3, that's 0. Yes, it's less than 2. And try this one, negative 2, negative 2 plus 3, that's 1. Yeah, it's less than 2, and so on. Over here, x plus 2 greater than negative 2. If you think of it as an equation, if there was an equal sign here, you would want to subtract 2 from both sides. So do the same thing here too. Subtract 2 from both sides. And then this will disappear and x is alone. Then you copy the greater than sign. And then here, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. x is greater than negative 4. Let's plot that. It's negative 4, that's not included, but everything else that is greater than that. All these numbers here. Then we can check. Let's say I take this number, 3, and put it here. 3 plus 2, well that's 5. Sure, it's greater than negative 2. Let's, let me try 0. 0 plus 2, 2, yeah, it's greater than negative 2. How about this one? Negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 makes 1. Yeah, that's greater than negative 2. Looks okay. Over here, x minus 4 greater than or equal to negative 2. This time, to isolate x on this side, I add 4 to both sides. Just like as if it was an equation. And then x is alone. And this sign stays that way. And then negative 2 plus 4 is 2. And then I plot it. 2 is included because it can is the or is here. It, it or equal to 2. It can be equal to 2 and then anything greater than that.